Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a little update with the range attack totem character. I was very low level when I showed you guys it and I'm actually level 93 currently uh, with our chieftain build. And I want to show you guys how it performs in a T15 beachhead. Now there are quite a few things you can do with the build. Like I decided to go mind over matter with it. I'm sure you could just cut off mind over matter and go blood magic. I haven't decided what's really better. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how it performs in T15 map clears. Now this build is more than capable of being played uh, in party play and or in... Actually, I'm going to turn down my sound just to make sure. Here we go. I'll turn the sound effects down. Uh, this can be played in group play and or solo play. It works very well for both. It is actually very efficient at doing these beaches or beachheads. It's not going to be the fastest clear in the world, but it is pretty fucking safe. And in my opinion, pretty fun. I really enjoy it. I think it's really fun being able to, uh, being able to kind of control where the mobs go. It's definitely a different pace for me, I guess you could say. <laughs> Are these done? Is there anything up here? Okay, nothing's up there. Anything over here? Let's see. I think that's pretty much... Well, actually, no, here we go. Oh, that's bears. Let's get away from that. As you can see, the, the totems can tank T15 bears because of how how much totem life scaling we've got, along with the like elemental resistance nodes, which makes them extremely tanky. Uh, but that is heavily dependent on your jewels and your actual totem level. We currently have a 2020 um, range attack totem. Uh, only reason why I haven't vaulted is I have a bunch of totems leveling. So uh, before I vault it and it goes minus one, <laughs> I want to make sure I have a backup level 20. Here we go. Here we can see it interact with an actual Harbinger mob. The mobs get sucked in because I have knockback with reverse knockback gloves, which makes it so whenever they hit targets, they can roll. Uh, knockback, and that knockback turns into a reverse knockback. Which to me makes it one of the more fun totem builds because I notice totems can be really annoying sometimes just because of like the way they attack or the way their AI works and the placement and this build picks up a ton of placement speed so I don't really mind the placement which is probably one of the most important things when you're playing a build is actually being able to enjoy your build um, and then just because of how much range they have they can hit like they can probably hit about maybe two and a half screens with like a good chain Now this is without Vol Haste or anything, um, so without any charges, I'm currently at 0.31 attacks per second. 
with Frenzy on, we're at 0.26. Or actually, that's Frenzy with Onslaught, I believe, as well. Now, this build actually does more than enough damage to carry, like, a support. Although, you can see with no mobs around, the damage is poo-poo, but that's okay. You can use Barrage for stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can easily carry another player, like, no problem. In fact, carrying people makes it almost better for you because it increases the life of all the mobs, which means that the mobs are going to stay alive longer, which means that it's more likely that the rare mob will get pulled in before the regular mobs die, which means you get more AoE overlaps on the rare mobs, if that even makes sense. I know it's kind of odd to explain. But not only do the totems knock targets back, they actually also taunt them. And I believe if you taunt a target, it deals 10% less damage to everybody except for the person and or thing that taunted it. And when you pair that with the Chieftain node, you get an additional, what is it, 8% less damage, I think it is? I don't know exactly how those stack. Is it 8% less? Yes. The other nice thing is uh, we have infinite and dirt, well, infinite, but we have very good sustain on endurance charges. Because whenever our totems kill a burning enemy, we have a 20% chance to get an endurance charge. And monsters are permanently. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Monsters are permanently ignited because I have a current 97% ignite chance with the build. You can see right here. Now, I will say um, that this build is not very good for a lot of maps, and the reason why I say that is if you have a map with, like, I don't know, shit all over the place, like, say there's a random ship and, I don't know, terrain going up and down and a random bush, um, if the targets can't get pulled through it, it's really going to reduce, like, the clear speed of your character, which is honestly, like, going to suck, unfortunately. Um, so you want to make sure that you're running open maps like dunes is very good springs is pretty okay you really want to get the like the open maps and i will tell you that this build is so good for breaching uh, because you pretty much just open your totems at the center of a breach and everything in the breach literally just gets pulled right to your totems i can sort of show you an example of how far the totems actually can hit so let's move past them to like here so this is, I don't know how far this is exactly. Well, they stopped attacking mobs, but it will chain all the way. Oh, it will chain all the way off at least one screen. Yeah, so it can hit all the way to here, for example. Now, if you want additional damage as well with this build, you can actually try picking up Fire Pen. I'm not 100% sure if it works, but it, I'm going to assume it works. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work, because it is a hit. And um, you could get, for example, 10% Fire Pen on your boots. You could also opt out and drop Ramako Sunlight and get Hinakora's Death Fury. I do not believe that you'll actually heal off of Hinakoras at all because of the way this damage is distributed. It's kind of weird. Thank you, Slubnock, for the sub, bro. Uh, 
I wouldn't really recommend this character for magic finding. Most magic finders want to use Abiscos, Abiscos, and you don't can't really do that with this character. What's over here? Nothing. Another harbinger. Kid Prodigy 16 with the sub as well. Much appreciated, man. Uh, I don't believe Hinakores will mess up your EE because the totem damage is like secondary damage. Um, so I don't really think it counts as like the killing. It's kind of it's a lot of really weird mechanics. Oh, well, I finally found a Marishard, guys. Feels Kappa, man. That um, only took me to level 100 and another character level 90 something. That feels good, man. That <laughs> feels Marishard, boys. <laughs> so, as you can see, this build is actually very suited for Magic Find. Um, if you would like to find Marishards, you should definitely play this build. But no, really, I mean, I think that this build really does suit and complement um, the Harbinger League very well because of the way, like, the Harbinger mobs interact. It just pulls them all in instantly. I like it. If you want to do endgame bosses with this, you're most likely going to need to use Vol Breach. I haven't attempted it, nor will I be for quite a while. This character is made for mapping for me. Talk about flasks. I mean, there's nothing really super special to use. You can use like a Wise Oak if you'd like. It's Pretty much standard to any build. You want to use defensive flasks. Um, onslaught would be really good. That's what I'm using right here because onslaught increases the attack speed of your totems. But other than that, you're free to use whatever flasks you'd like, to be honest. I'm just using quartz, quicksilver, granite, and uh, silver. Get this out of here. 34 monsters remaining. Alright, there we go. So that's pretty much uh, the map clear on this character. Um, it's not exactly like a tanky build. I don't get like actual mitigation. So if you want it to be like tanky, of course you'd have to do that through like flasks. You, you do get like a little bit of physical mitigation because you get like your permanent endurance charge uptime. But majority of this is basically your totems taunt a target and on top of taunting they reduce the damage that they deal. So that's where a majority of like the damage reduction comes from. You need to really make sure you have your totems out or else you're extremely, extremely squishy. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be the character. Uh, I do have a build guide kind of that I talked about previously, so if you want more info on this character, just look back in the videos. Uh, but I'll just go over my links really fast, and remember, if you want to look up this character on my profile, just look at the character Pock Swim. Uh, so this is Knockback, GMP, Tornado Shot, Chain, Chance to Ignite, Range Attack Totem. You do have to have a six link. Um, if you can't get a six link Quill Rain, I made a video on how to get one pretty easily. You can just use a Tabula Rasa. You don't really need many links. As you can see in my Belly of the Beast, I've got Range Attack Totem, Link to the Range Attack Totem, Link to the Range Attack Totem, Supported by Range Attack Totem, Link to the Range Attack Totem, and Blink Arrow. Uh, I'm just trying to get a 21 Range Attack Totem, and same thing in my boots. So if you want like an Immortal Call setup, you're pretty much free to get it. Uh, in terms of like the required uniques, it's just Quill Rain, three dragons for damage, 
Uh, you don't need a chest piece, obviously, but belly slash combs would probably be better. If you want to use soul mantle, you can. I don't recommend it. Uh, skirmish with plus one arrow is very good. If not, just use a skirmish. Eye of Innocence is required to make the build work. And then Empire's Grasp with ideally Elemental Weakness on hit. Not that important if you can't get it, but it is pretty nice if you can get it. Uh, and then your jewels are pretty important. So you'd want a Spire of Stone right here. Spire of Stone makes it so your totems cannot be stunned and gives them totem life per strength in the area. So this is a very good spot. And then you want a Rain of Splinters to add multiple projectiles. Other than that, your jewels should pretty much look similar to um, here. So like Totem Life and Chance to Ignite are extremely good. Obviously, if you can get max life on a jewel, that's amazing. Uh, I don't have max life on majority of my jewels, actually. Uh, another option is like Attack Speed with Bows, Totem Life, and Chance to Ignite. Once you get enough Ignite Chance, like I'm sitting at, for example, like 97%, I decided to swap out Chance to Ignite with Totem Elemental Resistance, since Harbinger mobs do deal quite a bit of elemental damage, I've noticed. I don't remember or don't know exactly how high the resistances on my totems are, but I've noticed I can run T15 maps now without them dying, so I'm pretty happy with the current setup of the character. Um, and then there's so much more life to get still, even though I'm at 6 point... Actually, I'm at like 8k life almost right now, uh, effective life, but I mean I have 3 life nodes here, I think I have everything here. 1 life node over there, 2 life nodes here, you can alternatively come up here and grab tireless. Uh, and there's also like a three-point jewel down here as well. And another three-point jewel down here as well. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you guys like the build, uh, remember that you can check it out at twitch.tv slash pox. Although I will be uh, gone for the next like five days or four days. I'm going to be at my parents. But you can also just check out the YouTube content or wait till I get back if you want to see more content with the character. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, thank you for the uh, RNG on the mirror shard, wherever it actually went. I don't actually know where I put it. Where did I? Oh, here it is. <laughs> here it is. So anyway, catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Appreciate it for all the support, boys.